Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Maker's Muse. Today I'll be showing you how to make awesome vapor smooth parts using your 3D printer and a rice cooker. So to do acetone smoothing on your 3D printed parts you'll need a few things, but before I go into them, I have to mention the safety aspect of this. There's pretty much no safety. It's extremely dangerous, you're vaporizing acetone which is highly flammable. It's also quite dangerous, the fumes are toxic. The uh, acetone itself is toxic. You want to do it in an outside area, well ventilated, no flames anywhere. And I'm doing a demonstration, but if you choose to copy what I'm doing, you do so at your own risk, and I have nothing to do with what happens. So with that out of the way, you'll need a rice cooker. So a rice cooker provides you with a non-flame heat source and an enclosed chamber to vaporize your acetone and get it to create a low fog essentially, which will cover your 3D printed parts. Um, this one was just in our house, it was starting to flake the paint off into our rice, so I just claimed it for this. Secondly, you'll need acetone. I do a lot of vapor smoothing. You probably don't need this much, but yeah, I, I use a lot of it. Um, each time you use it, it's pretty much uh, a one-way process. It'll vaporize off and you can't claim it back, um, but you only need a little bit each time. So the thing that's often overlooked with vapor smoothing with acetone is the parts will be really sticky and tacky after the process. So you need to hold them in place but not touch them afterwards for about an hour or so. So the best way to do this is using a jig. And the best jigs I've found include a steamer. So this is the base of a steamer. I just took the sides off. And rivets. So essentially I've created a pin bed. So this holds the 3D printed parts in place with only a few points of contact in the vapor bath and then you take it out and let, it, uh, let the vapor wick off and the parts dry off and you've only got a few tiny pock marks. Otherwise it'll be touching more places and then as you vapor smooth it it'll start being really awful and melty and you get a bad surface finish. So just as an example, this is a really small 3D printed part but with this bed you can probably sort of put it here and you get like two or three contact points and it'll probably smooth quite well. Alright, so here I'm going to explain my secret recipe for getting awesome smooth 3D printed parts. So before we start we need to make sure we have two things. The 3D printed part has to be quite cold and the rice cooker needs to be quite warm. So the reason we need this is we're making a vapour and the vapour has to condense onto the 3D printed part to smooth it properly. If it's too hot then it's not going to do it very well and you get a crappy smoothing surface. So, with the 3D printed part keep it in a cool room or maybe at the fridge for about 10 minutes you want to preheat your rice cooker with nothing in it for about three minutes or so. Not too long, just enough to kind of warm it up a bit. So, you have your acetone ready uh, in a little cup, uh, glass or something that's not going to get melted by the acetone because it does affect a lot of plastics. And you only want about two, maybe three capfuls of acetone depending on how big the part you're smoothing is. Because you want enough acetone to cover the whole surface, not evaporate and then you don't have enough and you get a only half smooth part because that's always a disaster. So, our rice cooker is warmed up. We have our print, which is cool. So this is happening really quickly. You get your print, bring it into the rice cooker with the lid off, get your acetone, pull that in underneath, not on top of the part. So you want to pull it into the rice cooker, but from the side, so you don't pour it on top of the 3D printed part, and put the lid straight back on. So I'm going to do a demonstration of this and show you how it's done. It's a bit of an art form, it'll take a lot of practice, but you'll get awesome smoothing results by doing this. Alright guys, so I've got my rice cooker preheating. I have my acetone, about two caps, capfuls worth. And I have safety glasses, because your eyes are extremely important. And I have the other parts on their jig inside my workshop where it's cool, because it's a hot Australian day. And if I take that here, they'll heat up and the acetone won't condense on the surface very well. So, that's slowly warming up. Probably give it another 30 seconds. There's a helicopter somewhere. I live close to the beach, so probably uh, some tourists drowning or something. Yeah, it looks like it's doing a search. I'm filming a video, please go away. No, it's coming closer. 
and it's windy. All right, so it's probably heated up enough. So my part's on, on the jig, and this is the bit that's really tricky. So you gotta open it up, put them in without knocking them off. Get your acetone, pour it in without on pouring them on top of the parts, just pour them on the side. Put the top back on, and make sure it's still on cook mode. Right, so I probably didn't let that preheat quite enough, but it'll still heat up quite quickly. Let's see if I can get focus on the parts. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright. So you know it's working because you start to hear the sizzling sound, which is the acetone starting to boil. that acetone will slowly rise up from the bottom because it's a really heavy vapour. It will rise up through the parts towards the surface. So you know it's done when it starts condensing on the top of the, the rice cooker. You can see it actually start to affect the parts now. We still have a friendly helicopter making a lot of noise. It's just hovering there. I don't know what it's doing. Whatever. I'm doing science. Alright, so it's pretty much reached up about halfway up the chamber by the looks of it. Parts start to go glossy and shiny. And you see it's now starting to hit the top of the, the rice cooker. So once it starts to condense on the top, I usually count for about 30 seconds or 40. Depends on how long you want to leave it. You don't want to leave it too long. That's the key point. If the parts get too hot, it'll start boiling off the surface of the part and you'll get all these pit marks and it's awful. So maybe one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine. Uh, gut instincts telling me to turn it off now. So kill the power, and then maybe do it for another ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn. I'll take the top off, you'll see the vapour start to come out. See off it goes. This is why I do it outside, so it's all dissipated now. But if you do this inside, that will sort of sit around and it's not so good to breathe in. And that's it. So, you see the parts are all nice and shiny now. So the trick is to get, the, get it out without touching them, because they're really sticky at this stage. So, just pull out my jig, and that skull came out awesome. So the little claw things, oh, the name things aren't so good, but whatever. So you put this inside somewhere cool, away from dust and bugs, because that'll stick to it, and let it dry. So that's it, there you have my technique for creating awesome smooth parts with your 3D printer and acetone and a rice cooker. So just a few things to point out, this only works with ABS, it will not work with PLA, and it only works with good ABS filament. We've found that if you buy cheap ABS filament from China, or unknown sources, often it's not actually pure ABS, so you'll try to smooth it, and it doesn't actually smooth very well, because it might have bits of, you know, hips, or some other random plastic thrown into the hopper with it. So if you want to get a really good finish on your smooth parts, I can recommend the Genuine Up plastic. That stuff works amazingly well. It's also a bit expensive, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so if you're unsure if your parts are going to smooth very well, get a bit of the filament and try to melt it into acetone. So 
If the filament on the roll does completely melt into acetone, you know it'll smooth well. If it doesn't completely melt into acetone, you know there's something else in it that's a bit dodgy, so it's not going to smooth very well. So yeah, uh, good luck, have fun, uh, be safe, and I'll see you soon here on Make Videos. See ya.